Welcome back, everybody. Another first round playoff preview series. This time we're going to be talking about the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Islanders. My name is Jim Parsons. I'm here with thehockeywriters.com. We've got two very informative people here with us to talk about their respective teams that they cover. Uh, Brandon Stanley and Mike Fink. Uh, Brandon, I'll start with you. How are you doing today? Hanging in there. I'm tired, but I'm ready to go, baby. Always. Playoff hockey's right here. It's best time of the year, right? Yeah, it's going to be good. It's getting exciting. First round stuff is always chaotic. Uh, and these two teams should be a very interesting watch. Uh, Mike is covering the Islanders. Mike, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, not a problem at all. So before I go into asking you guys some specific questions about your teams and what you're expecting in this series, let's just do a very quick kind of rundown of where these two teams were at heading into this series. Carolina with 113 points and the Islanders with 93 points on the season. In their season series against each other, it's gone 3-1-0 and for the Hurricanes, so they picked up three wins of the four games that they played. Uh, really, this is, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, this is kind of a series of Hurricanes being a possession team versus an Islanders kind of stingier defensive team uh, that is going to try to do this by committee and see what's going on here. The Carolina Hurricanes have always sort of been knocked for a lack of scoring finishing, and that's not going to help them when they're down. Svechnikov, Pacioretty, Andre Cash. So that's kind of the, I don't want to say a knock, but that may be the concern for Carolina going in. They have not been able to get over that hump so far. And the Islanders kind of squeaked into this whole thing. Uh, They added Bo Horvat at the trade deadline. There's some mixed reaction to how well he's been effective there, uh, but they are a Lou Lamarilla run team. They are physical. Uh, they like to grind you down and do all sorts of things in that respect. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. Brandon, I'll start with you. Uh, what have you seen from the Hurricanes this season? What are you thinking as this team uh, sort of 9-8-1 in their last 18? So they, they aren't coming into the playoffs like a house on fire here. What are you seeing from Carolina as the series begins? Uh, it's really been a struggle ever since Andre Svechnikov went down because, I mean, you kind of hit the nail on the head already. The biggest issue with this team before you lost him was how much firepower did they really have up front? Everybody knows about the blue line. Their goaltending is a little bit of a sneaky concern heading in as well. Um, Auntie Ranta has honestly been the guy. Well, in my opinion, I think he's been the best of their goalies. Um, save for a stretch from Piotr Kochetkov very early in the season, but he really struggled after he dealt with the injury mid season. So that's going to be one of the big, you know, things I think we're going to talk about tonight is the goaltending, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a bit of a rock fight between these two teams. I don't think we're going to expect a whole lot of six to five games here, but, uh, it's going to be a real interesting to see how they match up. Yeah, you're, you're probably right there. I mean, there's like what a 20 point difference between these two in the regular season, but it does not feel like a 20 point spread to me. This does not seem like a series where, it would be on paper given that Carolina wins this thing. Uh, They're probably the favorites going into it, but I don't know that this is going to be a cakewalk for them by any means. Uh, Mike, what are you seeing from the Islanders this year? How did you kind of view their season as a whole, their games maybe against Carolina and and what it looks like for the series here? Yeah, I think to start summarize the series best, the Islanders allow 2.6 goals per game. The Hurricanes allow 2.5. So that should be the preference how to start the uh, series. The Islanders season and their Match against the Hurricanes. It's been a roller coaster season. Uh, they looked dead in the water when uh, they entered the All Star break. And Bo Horvat, his val his value is kind of hard to reflect on the score sheet because he hasn't been that offensive player that people thought he would be. But his his presence has helped turn the season around, help them slide into the playoffs. They kind of did slide in because the Penguins had that loss to Chicago and the loss uh, the. And the overtime win, but um, the Islanders kind of slid in the last game of the season. In in terms of their matchup, though, against the Hurricanes, they have been one and three. But the irony is that they, everyone took a sigh of relief knowing they don't have to play the Bruins. It was like the funniest. Uh, we at least we don't have to play the Bruins first round uh, kind of feel. But uh, I will say, I will say the Hurricanes are favored. They won three out of four. But the Islanders have this feeling that if they just get in, which they did, they could be anyone. They played in 2021 the first time they played the Penguins, who beat them six out of eight times, and they won that series in six games. They have this feeling if they can just get in, no matter who they're playing the regular season, those they can they can make a run at it. So that's kind of where they're entering this, uh, even if they're underdogs in the series. Yeah, and they probably feel pretty good about not that Carolina 
can't go on a run here and win a bunch of games in a row, but they probably feel good about this matchup. Uh, just considering, you know, yes, it was a little lopsided in the regular season for the results, but you know, the Islanders, like you say, are a team that can, can turn it on and shut you down and, and grind you down. And Carolina has not been able to finish on their chances. So they're, they're probably thinking they've got a shot here. Let's get into some of these players that we're watching when it comes to Carolina. Uh, Natchez was 71 points. Ajo was 67. Brent Burns has had a resurging year with 61 points. Uh, Brandon, what are you thinking in terms of the players that you're watching? Is there, you know, an X factor for this series for Carolina? Is there somebody that fans who might not watch this team as often as you do should be keeping an eye on? So, all right, I'll, I'll try not to be too long here, but I do want to touch on three guys real quick. Sure. Um, and it's not very often probably that you would call a team's leading scorer an X factor, but my eyes are definitely going to be on Mark team natures um in the past obviously this has been his big breakout year like in years past he was never really this just under a point per game guy um but he really disappeared in the playoffs the last couple of years i think when the games got a little tighter and the physical play ramped up which a lot of teams in the eastern conference can really do that you look at a team like the new york islanders you look at a team like the bruins if, if they do end up advancing he's going to be one to definitely watch for me because he's going to have to be a huge factor if the Hurricanes are going to advance at all. Um, and then the two other guys that have kind of had some struggles this year that in this absence of Svechnikov absolutely have to step their games up are Seth Jarvis and Tavo Teravainen. Jarvis has had a pretty tough sophomore slump, but um, in last year's playoffs, he was arguably the Hurricanes' best forward, super high compete kid. He has shown some good signs of late. So if he can carry that over and give them a spark, he'll be real big. And Taravine, just been a tough year for him injury-wise. He's been uh, fought through a few little nagging things and uh, just hasn't been the consistent playmaker he's usually capable of being. So if those three guys, I feel like it's asking a lot to be like, oh, if all three of those guys can step their game up, um, <laughs> the Hurricanes will be all right. So that like, probably kind of tells you where we're at with the Hurricanes offense right now. Well, I was just going to ask you, like, does it require all three to step up or can one person really do it and, and finish off some chances and that be enough? yeah i mean they probably don't need all three i think two I think let's, let's settle right in the middle and say if two of those guys step up maybe the hurricanes do have a little bit of a run in them one thing i will say the last couple of years i had big expectations for the hurricanes in the playoffs and they fell short so maybe this year where i'm like yeah they might win a series um maybe they'll go on that run hockey's yeah. dumb like that you know well they might be due right they might it might be their turn uh yeah and i i know the pain of losing to the hurricanes i'm an oilers guy in 2006 that that one stung um what was that game June 19th, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, was uh, Mike, who are you watching? Are there are players on the Islanders, uh, some of their top scorers. Uh, Brock Nelson was 75 points. Matthew Barzell should be back. He had 51. Um, Lee had 50. Like, are there people that you're specifically expecting to sort of step up here and have good series for the Islanders? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, you're talking about the Hurricanes. You didn't mention my one X factor <clears throat> for the Hurricanes would be Brent Burns because he came on the scene this year and he's that guy. For the Hurricanes, I was thinking, oh, he'll, uh, he could get some good shots off from the point and may be a difference there. But uh, Islanders, simply put, it's a uh, winger, it's shooter, sharpshooters, guys who, who get good shots on net and test the Hurricanes goaltending, just basically dare them to make good saves, and their center depth and their, their centers in general. Because the way I feel, the, the way I've seen the Hurricanes beat the Islanders is with those good cross ice passes and those good, that great puck movement, especially on the rush. And they need their centers, especially in the defensive zone to step up and uh, be back, be back up on the back check and be there to stop the, stop those quick plays. And the, they're, so the centers, all four of them are going to have to step up in this series, but uh, offensively it's Paul Mary getting good shots. Uh, Horvat needs to start shooting more. Uh you need Brock Nelson. If he can get an open shot, he, he needs to take advantage of those because you need, they need, they're, that's, this is what the series come down to. If they can test uh, the goaltend to make some good saves, that, that's how they can win the series. So those are, the, those are your X factors. I mentioned like five just now or six. I don't know. But uh, uh, that those are the pe people that are going to make the difference in the series for them. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see which team gets more high scoring danger chances because both of these teams are pretty good at shutting it down and Carolina doesn't let anybody have the puck ever. So it'll be really interesting to see how that pans out. Uh, what about weaknesses or keys? To, sorry, let's go keys to the series for you, Brandon. If there's, I mean, you've mentioned people needing to step up and finish chances off and things like that. Is that the key to success for them? Or is there something else that the Carolina Hurricanes are going to need to do collectively or throughout the series to win it? 
Um, you know, I, <laughs> I hate to beat a dead horse, but like, it, it really is hard to look at too many things outside of their finishing ability. It's what's gotten them beaten in the past. They outplayed the New York Rangers a lot last year. Couldn't win that series because partially because of Igor Shesterkin, but you know, the Islanders have a pretty comparable goalie behind them and Ilya Sorokin. Very, very good, very capable of steering, stealing a series. Um, getting contributions from the back end, something Mike did just bring up. Brent Burns has probably been their best player this season. He's been that good. Um, him and Brady Shea, who had an insane year with 18 goals, um, might be the Hurricanes' two best finishers right now. <laughs> so uh, if they can continue to get contributions from those two guys. And, you know, I hate that I didn't mention him in the last part about, like, X Factors, but, yes, Barry Cook Kaniemi has been playing – hands down the best hockey of his career. Um, I think he's leading the hurricane. He, I saw a stat, I think it was 40 points in the last 62 games. He's paying, playing at about a 60 ish, just under 60 ish point pace. The last like three quarters of the season been very, very good. Excellent yeah. defensively. Um, so if they can continue to his trajectory as that really, really good two way force, that would be another, uh, big piece for the hurricanes. In this yeah, season. I agree. Are you, I'll ask you before we move over to Mike, I'll ask you, are you a little surprised what Carolina didn't do at the trade deadline? Like when they had no patch already and they had some money to spend and things like that. Is that, is that a kind of a, whatever, an itch in your craw there that they didn't do more? Yeah. It was a little frustrating. Um, I mean, just, it seems like every year we hear the hurricanes, they were in on Bo Horvat, right? They were in on Timo Meyer. They were in on everybody. And it's, it's, it's kind of weird to me that they keep being in on everybody and they end up with, Yes, to pull your and it's is that not kind of weird to anybody else? I mean, I don't know. So it's it you can't predict an injury like Svechnikov's happening right after the deadline. Yeah. I'm sure if that had happened a couple of weeks earlier, things would have been different. But <laughs> there's a whole lot of discourse we can get into with this about how I'm not even 100 percent sure the front office really thought this was the year. You know, I think they may have their eyes set on next year and therefore this summer. Do they go after a guy like Elias Lindholm, who there was a lot of chatter about? He really mm, wanted to play for Rod Brendamore once upon a time and then got traded away in the Dougie Hamilton deal. Again, I don't want to go on too long, but there's a lot of uh, ways we could go with that conversation right there. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other show, depending on how Carolina does here. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mike, what about you? What's the key to success here for the Islanders? I mean, I guess they're considered uh, underdogs at this point. Is there something that they can do to give themselves a better shot to win this? Yeah, I mean, I see two things being... The difference makers for them one win the shot battle where the hurricanes are they can go a game where they allow 15 shots on net 20 shots on net they have the defense to do it and they will do it especially the islanders the islanders have to make this a game where it's like 25 25 or 30 25 in favor of the islanders where they're they're daring uh the hurricane they're daring the hurricanes to make to make those saves and they're daring them to uh, win this to win this series in net and not with their defense and so that's a bit first big key is getting one, getting good shots on it, getting shots on it, and getting, getting good shots on it. And two, making this a goaltending duel, making this series. And if, if this series, you could project a lot of one, nothing games, a lot of two to one games, maybe even three, two, but like a lot of low scoring games, but make it one of those games where if you, if you have to rely on one goaltender to make a big save or have, have a lights out performance, Sorokin's the guy who could do it and win the series for you. You want to make this series a dirty, not dirty, but like, a grind it out, very hard to get and get move the puck, especially into the offensive zone for both teams, and make it a goaltending duel where once both goaltenders got to make those those big difference maker, big game changing saves, and that's the those are the those are the two avenues to see the Islanders winning the series basically. That's a really good transition for me to you, Brandon, and I'm going to ask you this when it talks to like worries, concerns uh, for the Hurricanes. Uh, we talked about. The finishing so we don't necessarily need to go there again but he brings up the goaltending and in a goaltending duel it seems like it's obvious on paper that this is going the islanders way uh is that a big concern for you is that the thing that the hurricane should be most worried about as it becomes a goaltending battle and sorokin just takes over yeah i, I think that's definitely got to be up there because i don't even 100 sure the hurricanes know who the guy is right now <laughs> like they've done everything they've could they can to put anderson in position to like step up be the guy get a feel and start playing some really good hockey. And he really has never put at least multiple games together at any point this season. Um, and it's another reason why just a couple of weeks ago, you had Piotr Kochekov in the NHL when Ranta was hurt. And Rod kind of put him in the same position. He had games against the Devils. He had games against the Rangers. He was literally saying, kid, 
please, I beg you, take this job. And he never really did either. So the Hurricanes are searching for that guy right now. And it's it's definitely got a big cloud of, you know, a big question mark over this series for them. Um, and my only other thing, I would say the power play, because the Hurricanes power play has been downright abysmal, but the Islanders hasn't been much better. <laughs> um, and it's, it's the worst, by the way, like one of the worst. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure it's worse than the entire league. My only other real concern is the Hurricanes can and at times become a bit of a over-aggressive, too much pressing team. And the Islanders do have talent up front, guys like Bo Horvat, guys like Matt Barzell. And if this does become that low scoring grinded out game, the Hurricanes aggressiveness has gotten them in trouble in the past. And this is not a team that you want to give those one or two little mistakes to. They make you pay and then you are chasing against a guy like Sorokin. So I would say that's along with the goaltending, those are probably my two biggest concerns out of the series. Yeah, that's probably fair. If the Islanders get a lead here because Carolina gets over aggressive, they're pretty good at shutting it down. And then you got Sorokin backing it up, right? Uh, what about you, Mike? Is there a concern or a worry, something that you might say, wouldn't say a key to failure, but is something that could end up biting the Islanders in this series? I mean, we mentioned it just now. The power play is, is awful. I think 15% of their opportunities they've scored this season. And which is real bad in a league where team, I think or the rest of the league is succeeding on the power play. And in a year where the Oilers broke the power play record of percentage of goals scored on the power play, the Islanders power play has been just awful. And it, it, it's to the point where there's not one thing where you could say, Oh, that's the one weakness. There's so many issues where, there's no puck movement. There's no direction. There's no general like, okay, what's the plan on this? There's no player that you say, oh, yeah, that's the guy who's going to beat you on the power play. So that that is the weakness. And in a playoff series, especially this type of series, where it's going to be – you have – where one goal could be the difference, you need a power play to step up. And they're going to need to figure out what they – how they want to attack – how they want to attack on the power play, what their plan is, and – and that's that that's the underlying weakness that can basically I'll be there undoing in the series. Yeah. And it is interesting too, when you get into the playoffs and, and power plays are traditionally called a lot less and you're not at all concerned that you give the Islanders a power play, it changes the way that you play. Right. So Carolina is probably not afraid of that factor, which will be a, a key for them. Uh, Brandon, let's Google with something I like doing here a lot with the bold and not so bold prediction. So a bold prediction is something that you're going to maybe go out on a limb a little bit here. It's not so obvious, but something that you're thinking about that maybe others aren't. And then a not so bold prediction is probably something really obvious that we all kind of know is going to happen, but we should expect to see it. What would your bold and not so bold prediction for Carolina be? My bold prediction is that Antti Ranta, if he doesn't start game one, he becomes the guy pretty quickly because I, again, I, and maybe this isn't that bold because I've already kind of mentioned it, but I just think, people are probably going to look to Freddie Anderson to be the guy. And again, the Hurricanes have wanted him to be the guy, but Ronta has been your better, like your, your, your better option. So for me, I, I think, again, maybe not the boldest thing in the world, but that's what I would go with. And then not so bold, Sebastian Ajo has actually struggled just a little bit down the stretch, not been quite as dynamic offensively as he has been at times. But this is a guy that in the playoffs every single year, he's just under a point a game in his career in the playoffs. And he's very underappreciated defensively, too. I think that's another thing people don't really realize is how competitive and how good 200 foot he is. Not that surprising for a Brendan Moore coach player, right? But anyway, um, I expect him to have a huge series. And that could be one thing that may potentially tilt the scales in the Hurricanes' favor. I do think he could have the type of series that really carries them to the second round. Yeah, and if he does step up, that's going to be a major factor for them. Uh, what about you, Mike? Uh, bold, not so bold prediction when it comes to the Islanders. Yeah. I mean, let's start with the not bold prediction. I mean, I would say on the series in general is that the under on the over under is going to cover in most, if not all the games. I don't, I don't, I'm not advocating for everyone to bet. And I don't think we're sponsored by a betting place to do that anyway. But um, you, the, oh, let's say the total is going to be very low in both the, in like every game, like five and a half is a low total. Let's say just keep betting the under. And usually it's, some people say it's not fun to bet the under, you bet the under on these games, you'll just be rooting for good defense and it's going to be what the series could turn out to be. And you'll be very happy if it's zero, zero at the end of the second period. And you'll be, that's my, I'm not so bold prediction uh, that most of the games are going to have the under covering on, uh, on the uh, betting on, on those uh, totals for those things. My um, bold prediction go real 
like, I don't know how bold we'll say this is, but Matt Barzell leads the Islanders in goal score, which is bold considering he, I think, he, you, if you look at his uh, goals to assist splits, where it's all basically most of not all split assists, and he's a pass first player. I think this series, it could it could be the series where he comes back and he just comes in with like, I'm going to shoot first this time. I'm just going to if I get open shots, I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot. And if he if he does that and he starts taking advantage of his shot, especially in this type of series. He he could lead the Islanders. I don't think it's going to happen. I wouldn't bet. I wouldn't say that's that's what's going to happen. But bold prediction. He's the he leads the Islanders in goal scored, and we can maybe come back to uh, this video if it hits. So, uh, well, yeah, and you you look like a million bucks. You know what'll be interesting about that too uh, is if he does you know, pot some early goals, what that does for Horvat, right? Because he's expected to score a lot and maybe hasn't done so much since he got to the Islanders, but if he can open up that option and make Corvette a weapon as well, uh, that could be a really uh, powerful dynamic well, duo there. I mean, uh, on, the, on the note, I would add that in the first few games they played together, they played like a handful of games when Horvat was traded before Barzell got hurt. Barzell got hurt in the middle of February. They were on the same line and you could tell there was something in the works because Barzell is a pass first player who creates open ice and Horvat has that shot. And that, that's that's I think what everyone is kind of anticipating in the series that Barzell will create open chances for Horvat, but it, the bold prediction is to say that Barzell is just going to shoot the puck on that. Uh, for that's why I'll go with that. But uh, that's kind of the interesting note that you mentioned that now that they're back together, we'll see what happens. We'll see how if that chemistry is still there if it is there. Yeah, that'll be big for them if it is. Uh, MVPs, uh, Brandon, you can pick somebody from the Islanders. You can pick somebody from the Hurricanes. It doesn't really matter which team you go with, but if you had to say who the MVP of the series is going to be, who would be your guess? Is it contingent on the winner? <laughs> no, yeah. not necessarily, because there's really no award for an MVP in a series, right? It's just kind of a preferential, yeah. your opinion on who it is. So if you want to pick somebody that you're like, this was the guy who made the difference for everybody, uh, who would you pick? It is rare to see that from the loser, though. All right, so I guess I'll go with – I I want to go with Sorokin, but honestly – well, we'll get to my winner in just a minute. I know that's the last thing on the docket, but uh, I'll go with Ajo. I think I have to. I think if the Hurricanes are going to pull this out, it has to be, really. So I think it makes the most sense. Nope, that's a, that's a fair one. Uh, I think your odds are pretty good if that does turn out to be Carolina series that Ajo is the difference maker there. Uh, Mike, do you have a MVP that you believe is either on the Islanders or Carolina? Who are you picking? Yeah, the the Islanders have a Sebastian Ajo. I should have said him. Be like a genius. <laughs> Everybody uh, picks Ajo. Yeah, Ajo. Ajo, Ajo's going to yeah. win the series. Uh, if the Hurricanes win the series, Jacob Slavin's going to be the MVP and no one's going to care because he's the kind of guy where it's like, his defensive stats and the way he plays defensively is what makes the difference in a lot of these series. But um, it, but he's not going to, no one's going to, he's not going to stand out in the stat sheet and he's not going to, no one, you're going to have to watch on the ice and see him make that difference. And it's going to be like, Oh yeah, he's, he's the, he's the guy that made that will the hurricanes or was a big difference in this series. He's the kind of guy who will do that. If the Islanders win Sorokin will probably, be your MVP. I'll have, I'll have to have a few shutouts also to be able to do that, or one goal games where he makes like 30, 40 saves. Uh, those MVP, if there's one guy skater wise in the Islanders, I'd say both Horvat would be that guy. I said, just mentioned Barzell leads the Islanders in goal scored, but Horvat's, if Horvat steps up and becomes that goal scorer, then he'll, he'll also be the series MVP if we're giving that the, the awards. Yeah, no, I like both of those picks. I think you you guys are both onto something. Uh, and you're probably right, Brandon, the, the MVP will come from the, the team that walks away with this uh, series. So let's uh, finish this off by predicting the outcome here. Uh, I'm always curious to see who who picks who, whether you pick your own team that you cover or you pick the opposition. But Brandon, what do you think is going to happen in this series? How many games and who wins it? Uh, it's going seven, but I'm taking the Canes. Um, I think they'll do enough offensively. And I think they'll do enough to stymie the Islanders chances, but they'll pull it out. If we've, you know, this, these two teams did match up a couple years ago. Obviously there's a lot of new faces on both sides. Hurricane swept that series. Probably has zero bearing on this one, but I still think the hurricanes get it done. I do think it goes seven though. Mike, are you uh, going with the Islanders? Do you think the hurricanes are going to take it? I, I see the series going the distance. I'm 
I keep going back and forth my head on that game seven because I say Hurricanes in seven. But if there's a game seven, just like there was game seven with the Rangers and Hurricanes last year, I can see that game seven being like, okay, who's, who's the better goalie in net? And then take the goalie. And I guess similar with the Lightning and the Maple Leafs last year, where it was like game seven, you, you take better team, but better goaltender, you always ha- lean on that. I'll still lean Hurricanes in seven in like one of those, uh, it's a, like every game's like a lot of games are going to be one goal games and low, like low scoring games and game seven, the Hurricanes win. If you ask me tomorrow morning, I might say the Islanders in seven, but right, like I'm leaning Hurricanes and a bit, but this is this is a series that even if, though it's a one four, it's one that can go the distance and it's a going to be you could go either way and wouldn't surprise me if the Islanders won the series even in six games. Uh, but I'd still lean Hurricanes in seven in the end of the day. I'll go off the board just a tiny little bit. I'm going to say Carolina in six, but I'm not at all comfortable with that. Uh, I believe that Carolina is probably going to have enough to take this out, but I think the Islanders are going to give them a run for their money. I am very curious with the series uh, to see how it shapes up. I think, as we mentioned earlier, the point differential between these two teams in the regular season is not indicative of how this is going to go. Um, but I do think the Hurricanes are probably going to be the ones to pull it out. And just because you both said seven, I'll say six. So uh, I'm not at all comfortable with that, but you never know. Uh, Brandon, where can people read your stuff? thehockeywriters.com. I got a podcast too. It's called Tracking the Storm. If you want to check me out there, um, that's it. <laughs> awesome. And Mike, uh, where can people find your stuff? Yeah, on uh, Hockey Writers on the Islanders page. Once in a while, I write a general uh, topic. Hopefully, I'll be able to cover some of those uh, when the playoffs are in full swing. Uh, look at some big ideas. But uh, all right now, all Islanders coverage. Uh, Got to got to quickly finish up something uh, that I'm preparing. Hopefully, it'll be out tomorrow morning uh, or tomorrow afternoon. So, hopefully, just a lot of a lot of playoff stuff coming up uh, for you. Hopefully, there you go. Uh, and as people watch this video, uh, maybe the same day they can flop right over to thehockeywriters.com and check it out. Uh, for everybody else watching this, uh, put it in the comment section. Let us know who you think is going to win this series and how many games you're going to you think they'll win it. And if you want, pick an MVP and uh, let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, Brad and Mike, thank you very much for doing this. Uh, whatever team gets through this first round, hopefully we'll have the chance to get you back to talk about the second round. For everybody else watching this, check out all the other videos on the YouTube channel. TheHockeyWriters.com has got all your content coverage there, uh, and you can check out everything as the first round makes its way through. Thanks, guys, and we'll talk to everybody on the next one. Thanks, Dan.